Hello and welcome to FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro is seeking public input about the Summit Avenue Streetscape project. A public information meeting will take place from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Thursday, February 22nd at the Greensboro History Museum. Residents are encouraged to drop by at any time to view the final design and engineering plans and provide feedback about landscape and hardscape features, such as plants and lighting preferences. For those who cannot attend the meeting, the project team will be accepting comments online until Thursday, March 8th. The project will provide streetscape enhancements along Summit Avenue from LeBauer Park to the railroad underpass from Percy Street to Sullivan Street and along Yanceyville Street from East Lindsay Street to East Bessemer Avenue. The project will also address improved storm drainage, new landscape medians, bicycle lanes and decorative street lighting. This project is funded by the 2008 and 2016 voter-approved community and economic development bonds. Again, the meeting takes place at the Greensboro History Museum, which is located at 130 Summit Avenue. To review the project details and or submit comments, please visit GreensboroSummitProject.com. A study has been completed on the section of Mackey Road between Adams Farm Parkway and High Point Road to determine ways to improve vehicle and pedestrian safety and vehicle capacity. This project involves adding turn lanes, monolithic islands, and sidewalks for pedestrian safety. A public information session was held in January. The public can still weigh in on the design plans, which are 50 percent completed. Comments will be accepted until Tuesday, February 20th. The list of recommended improvements include widening to a five-lane section, adding sidewalks along both sides of Mackey Road, installing a four-foot concrete monolithic island to the High Point Road approach, adding dual left-turn lanes onto High Point Road and on Adams Farm Parkway onto Mackey Road, and marking extra storage links for various turn lanes. The anticipated timeline is as follows. The design phase began in the spring of 2017. This was followed by two public meetings. The first took place in the fall of 2017, and the second meeting will happen in the spring of 2018. The right-of-way acquisition gets underway in the summer of 2018. Construction will start in the spring of 2019, and construction is slated to be finished in the fall of 2019. If you have any questions or comments about the project, please send an email to Denise Conway. The Neighborhood Development Department is in need of qualified general contractors for its housing rehabilitation programs. General contractors are invited to attend an interest meeting to learn more about the programs and types of opportunities that are available. The meeting will take place from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesday, February 20th at the Hemp Hill Library located at 2301 West Vandalia Road. For more information, call the Neighborhood Development Department at 336-373-3624. In an effort to help our employees and residents improve their quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. When someone collapses from sudden cardiac arrest in front of you, you call 911, but then what? Hi, my name's Amanda Hall. I'm a registered nurse here at Cone Health Heart and Vascular Center. Today, I want to teach you how to perform hands-only CPR, the importance of it, and how you can help save a life. Hands-only CPR is CPR without mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. It's only for teens and adults. You would do hands-only CPR on anyone that collapses in front of you and is not breathing normally. And now to learn hands-only CPR. A person collapsed in front of you. They're not breathing normally and they're unresponsive. Are you okay? Are you okay? The first thing you want to do is call 911. If you're calling from a cell phone, it may be helpful to put it on speaker where the dispatcher can hear you and you can hear her as you continue to work. The dispatcher will give you detailed instructions, so don't worry. If the patient is not on a hard surface, you want to move them to the floor. You want to interlock your hands, place the heel in the center of their chest, and start compressions, fast and hard. 
You will continue to do hands-only CPR until someone comes to relieve you, help arrives, or until you just physically cannot do CPR any longer. Remember, any help is better than no help at all. Hands-only CPR will greatly increase their chance of survival. 70% of all cardiac arrest will happen in a person's home. Only half of those people will receive CPR. Hands-only CPR can double or triple their chances of survival. Sudden cardiac arrest is an electrical malfunction of the heart. It doesn't allow blood and oxygen to go to the organs that are needed within the body. Hands-only CPR can effectively move that blood and oxygen to those body parts. Thanks for joining me today and learning hands-only CPR. When someone collapses in front of you, it can be a very stressful situation. Remember, call 911 and start compressions. Hands-only CPR will increase their chances of survival. For more information on heart health, go to conehealth.com slash heart. I'm Amanda Hall. Calling all book lovers to the Central Library. Find out why. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The City of Greensboro has debuted its new website, which offers a more user-friendly platform, emphasizing the customer service search function and focusing on department services. This approach will make it easier for users to find the information they're looking for because they will click fewer times than they did on the previous website. Jay Nichols, Director of Information Technology, said users will be pleased to see the new website is mobile responsive for both phones and tablets. We recognize people are on the go accessing our website from their devices. The home page displays links to everything from online payments to trash and recycling to jobs and city council meetings. Here, visitors can also find news, events, meetings, and links to the city's official social media pages. This has been a year-long process and joint effort between the information technology and communications and marketing departments. From concept to completion, the process involved researching other municipal websites and seeking input from each of our city departments to design a website site we feel embodies the look and feel of Greensboro. If you haven't already done so, take a moment to visit the city's new website and let us know what you think. The Greensboro Public Library will host the annual Book Lovers Social. This year's featured author, Sharon McCrum, will read and sign copies of her latest book, The Unquiet Grave. The event will take place from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 21st at Central Library, located at 219 North Church Street. The Book Lovers Social offers bibliophiles the opportunity to connect with fellow readers, browse displays of hot new book club titles, and enjoy refreshments. It's also an ideal time to vote on selections for the library's book club collection for 2018. New York Times best-selling author Sharon McCrum is known for her ballad series that explores the relationships between the mountains of Appalachia and the people who call them home. Her latest book, The Unquiet Grave, is set in the 19th century West Virginia and based on the true story of one of the strangest murder trials in American history the case of the Greenbrier Ghost. The Greenbrier Ghost is a well-known story in American folklore. Sharon McCrum is the first author to look beneath the legend to unearth the facts. Using a century of genealogical material and other historical documents, McCrum reveals new information and brings to life the personalities involved in the trial. McCrum's reading will begin at 7.15 p.m. This event is free and open to the public, but RSVPs are appreciated. If you plan to attend, please send an email to Beth Sheffield. Don't miss your chance to experience the GTA Black History Heritage Ride hosted by the Greensboro Transit Authority. The custom-wrapped bus will familiarize riders and the community with the accomplishments and contributions made by African Americans as we recognize Black History Month. 
Once aboard, commuters will be surrounded by pictures and stories of people, places, and moments in black history made possible by African Americans and others who gave their tireless and sacrificial support to civil rights. In addition to experiencing the heritage ride displays during regular operating service, the bus is available at no charge to schools, community centers, and other groups who wish to request a special visit. Students in grades K through 8 can board the bus to view the images and take a brief ride as they learn about public transportation and how it played a strategic role in civil rights by the actions of Rosa Parks, Edward Greenlee, and Charlotte Hawkins Brown, just to name a few. Requests to display the Heritage Ride bus at your location can be submitted on GTA's website. In an effort to spotlight and celebrate the entrepreneurs, the artists, the community builders, and essentially the next generation of leaders, the City of Greensboro is proud to partner with Action Greensboro to introduce our Made in Greensboro series. This day, we place the spotlight on custom home builder turned creative artist, Felix Simper. Sometimes an unexpected change in careers brings upon greatness. In Felix Simper's case, it has brought him international artistic success and the attention of celebrities. Born in Cuba and raised in Spain, Simper is an electrician by trade and was a Greensboro custom home builder when the housing crisis hit in 2008. Felix had nearly $5 million in property built under his business, Simper Homes, but they weren't selling because the banks weren't lending. Felix had always been creative and artistic. He loved to sketch, so he started teaching himself how to paint. Soon he was selling the paintings and opened a studio in Revolution Mills. It took a year of experimentation to create his signature medium, stacks of glued paper that can be stretched like an accordion. His work evoked pop culture and pop art. He's made busts of icons such as Notorious B.I.G. and sculptures of potato chip bags or Cheez-It boxes made from 7,000 sheets of paper. To learn more about Made in Greensboro or to see more images taken by photographers Jerry Walford and Scott Mothersbaugh, visit the Action Greensboro website at madeingso.com. Brown Recreation Center is offering back-to-basics tutoring for students in kindergarten through fifth grade. These sessions will take place from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Certified teachers with more than 10 years of experience will provide end-of-grade preparation and general tutoring services. The cost is $35 per student. Brown Recreation Center is located at 302 East Vandalia Road. To register for the tutoring sessions, please contact Sherry Kirby at 336-543-0086. We've all heard the saying, there's an app for that. This happens to be the case for the city's Solid Waste and Recycling Division. We'll tell you all about it coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The city has a new online tool to help residents track trash, recycling, yard waste, or bulk collection services. Joining me now to tell us about the new GSO Collects app is Tori Carley. She is the city's waste reduction supervisor. Hello, Tori. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thanks for having me. We're so glad you're here. So tell me, what will the GSO Collects app actually allow residents to do? So there's two key features with the GSO Collects app right now. Um, one is notifications. You can either get a notification on your phone through the app or if you wanted to go online and set up either a phone call or a text message like maybe if you have a teenager or a spouse that's responsible for taking the cans down to the curb you could um, have the app text them um, so you can go online for those tools and then also there's a waste wizard search feature so if you have a question like is my frying pan recyclable? Or what about this plastic spoon? Can I recycle it? You can actually type it into the app and it's gonna tell you 
if it's recyclable or not, but also if it's not, if it has an alternative location, like maybe it's household hazardous waste, it's gonna actually show you where that location for that drop-off is. Okay, so this is technology coming to government, mm -hmm. and as you said, you can receive a text message, so there's no excuse for missing your collection day, mm -hmm. or as you said, not knowing what does go into recycling as opposed to what doesn't. Mm -hmm. So how can residents access the app and actually use it? So there are two main ways. You can either download it onto your smartphone, either Apple or Android, or you can go online um, to use the, the tool online. And then you'll also be able to see things like if you need to report an issue, you can do that, or if you need to find one of our drop-off locations, our free drop-off locations for recycling, we've got 20 of those around the city, and we're trying to let people know where those are. Okay, and that's really good to know because we want it to be convenient. Recycling has always been something we talk about from a government standpoint, getting more people involved, and if we have more locations, then I think people are more likely to join us in the effort. Exactly. So what prompted the city to consider an app of all things to make this available and say we want residents to get on board. Yeah, so one of the great things is if we have something crazy like, I don't know, Martin Luther King Jr. Day and then two snow days like we did this year, I'm actually able to drag and drop the notifications so that your schedule is going to be adjusted and so you won't receive the notification of, you know, take your trash out to the curb until it's actually your collection day, even if it's on a Saturday or um, another day that's not your normal day. And then also we have um, low participation rate um, across the board in our recycling program. So we're really trying to show people more things that are recyclable and you know answer those questions and be really proactive about that kind of stuff. So there's gonna be opportunities for us to send out an education update um, through the app or online occasionally, not very often, but we'll be able to educate residents that way. And then also we have really high contamination um, in our recycling. The national average for contamination, that's garbage in the recycling or something that's not recyclable in there. The national average is about five to 10 percent and Greensboro is hovering at 20 to 22 percent on an average day. And so we're really trying hard to decrease that contamination through convenience, like you mentioned, um, and answering people's questions in a more proactive way. And I can't be, you know, available to answer emails 24-7, but the app can. The app can answer those questions. And I think with what you're saying as far as what our contamination rate is, maybe it's the single stream recycling that people are getting a little confused, thinking that several things can go into recycling, but they're putting the wrong thing in, mm -hmm. or the, content, the containers mm -hmm. may have food in it, mm -hmm. or drinks. Yeah, and really what we see is we see two different kinds of recyclers. We either see a wishful recycler that thinks, oh, I wish this styrofoam was recyclable. I'm going to put this, the styrofoam in the recycling can, and if they see it enough, they're going to start recycling it, and that's not really how it works. And then there's also the, the careless recyclers. So we imagine that some residents, unfortunately, are using their recycling can as a spare trash can. And if they would just take the time to separate the trash from the recycling, they would actually have a lot less trash and um, we would be getting proper material and, and it would be really good for our recycling program. Well, I think the app is a great place to start. Thank you for sharing that and letting us know mm -hmm. how easy it is to get it on your phone, whether you have an Apple or an Android system. And I think with your updates and educational blitzes, you're gonna get people on board and we're gonna get that contamination number really to come so. down. We really hope so. Well, do come back, Tori. Um, it's always good to see you, but come back and give us updates and let us know how we're doing on our recycling. Okay, we will do. Thank you. Stay tuned for a little-known fact about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back. One way to stay informed about what's happening in the city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you can't attend, we broadcast the meetings live right here on GTN and we stream the meetings live on the city's website.
Council meetings take place at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays of the month on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building, located at 300 West Washington Street. The first meeting of the month will primarily be focused on public comments, special presentations, and consent items. The meeting occurring on the third Tuesday of the month will primarily be for public hearings and business items with no public comments. The fourth Tuesday of the month will be reserved for a meeting as needed. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit greensboro-nc.gov slash council meetings. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Greensboro Parks and Recreation has begun the public input phase of the Plan to Play Master Plan that will help the department map out its goals for community recreation for the next 20 years. Residents can participate through information gathering surveys and public meetings beginning on Thursday, February 22nd. The consulting group, which is preparing the plan, has mailed surveys to a random sampling of 2,500 residents. Other online surveys and in-person engagement opportunities will be open to all residents later this month. Residents are encouraged to save the date for the Plan to Play Community Conversation on February 22nd from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Van Dyke Performance Space. This is a drop-in session providing opportunities for attendees to speak directly to the consultants. Residents may attend at any time. A brief explanatory presentation will take place at the top of each hour. Free child care will be provided for kids ages 4 to 12. Free parking is available at the Church Street parking deck after 5 p.m. The Van Dyke Performance Space is located at 200 North Davy Street. For more information about the park's master plan, visit the city's website. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight. But first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the fantastic events being featured this week on the town. Hey, this is Jody. This weekend, Greensboro has an array of fun and musical events happening around the city. On Friday, join the Greensboro Tar Heel Chorus under the direction of Carol Stevenson for their Winter Opus Concert. Beginning at 7.30 p.m., come hear some of your favorite a cappella music. Visit greensboro-nc.gov slash opus for more information. On Saturday, starting at 6 p.m., come out to the Greensboro Coliseum to watch Winter Jam. Grammy-nominated, platinum-selling, and Billboard Music Award-winning rockers Skillet will headline the 2018 Tour Spectacular. Among the biggest annual tours in the world, Winter Jam is once again set to showcase a lineup of some of the best and brightest names in Christian music. For ticket information, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. This week, check out the North Carolina Comedy Festival at the Carolina Theater. Brought to you by The Idiot Box, come see some of the funniest stand-up comedians North Carolina has to offer. There will be performances through Friday. Go to carolinatheater.com for tickets, a list of performers, and performance times. The North Carolina Triad Theater League presents Creating Shakespeare, a dynamic and active workshop designed for all levels. Workshops will be held throughout the year at various theater locations, so if you have an interest in theater, don't miss out. More specifics, including workshop dates and registration information, can be found online at triadtheater.com. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to visit the Wicked Plants exhibit at the Greensboro Science Center. Visitors will step into a macabre world where plants hold the power. Poisonous, carnivorous, or just plain nasty, the diabolical botanicals represented throughout Wicked Plants are shown in all their fearful glory. Go to greensboroscience.org for more information. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here on GTN to find out more about events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. Community Relations partners with community members in navigating city services to resolve concerns, creating long-term positive relationships throughout our city. Community Relations coordinates City Academy, a 10-week program that teaches residents about city government, resulting in well-informed and civically engaged residents. The office also serves as the city's representative on the Mayor's Committee for Persons with Disabilities. 
Community Relations manages the city's compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, which includes auditing city facilities, programs, and services for accessibility. Neighborhood and community support is available through staff attending neighborhood association meetings and coordinating neighborhood walks. To request a staff member to attend your upcoming meeting or to schedule a neighborhood walk, call Community Relations at 336-373-2723. On the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout out. This week's shout out goes to the new recruiting class for the Greensboro Police Department. A total of 15 officers have joined the force. Congratulations to the members of the 103rd Police Academy class. As with all graduations, the ceremony took place at the Carolina Theater in downtown Greensboro. Chief Wayne Scott says that he reminds all new officers to act with fairness, compassion, honesty, integrity, passion, and courage. Wearing a badge requires having a noble character and performing with the highest standards of law enforcement's profession. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.